So last week we went over how to choose your mouse and this week we're gonna go over the next step of choosing your peripherals and that's gonna be your keyboard. Now, if you thought there were a lot of options for mice out there, you're gonna be absolutely blown away by how many options you have for a keyboard. So first, let's talk about size. There are three main sizes out there. There's full size, which is, you know, your typical keyboard that you've probably used at work, used at school. You know, you have a full numpad, you have your full alt keys, you have your insert, your print screen, all those uh, keys on there as well. Next up is 10 keyless, which is basically a full keyboard with just the numpad completely removed. And next up is the 60%, which removes your alt row, it removes your numpad, removes your arrow keys, and it removes those home insert print screen buttons as well. So the less common sizes like 75%, 65%, and even 40% are becoming a little bit more popular and they're meant to fill in those gaps between the more common sizes. Now, why would you want a smaller keyboard than a full-size keyboard? Why wouldn't you want everything? And a lot of people choose things like 60% so that they can get the most amount of desk space for their mouse and for other things. You know, not everybody has a huge desk. 60% is probably one of the most common custom board sizes. With professional gamers, especially FPS pros, most of them will use a 10 keyless because it is the exact same size and layout as a regular full-size keyboard, but you're just chopping the numpad off. I personally use a 10 keyless, I really enjoy it. I've tried 60%, but I ended up really missing the alt row. I, I missed it a lot. I missed having my home, my insert, and my print screen without having to use different layers by using the macros. And 10 keyless feels like the most natural spot for me. Now you'll notice I mentioned custom boards, and there are three main categories of keyboards when you're gonna go buy. There's the fully assembled, which is basically your standard keyboard. You take it out of the box, you plug it in, it's good to go. It's all set up and good. Next up is gonna be bare bones keyboards. And that typically is just the case and the PCB. You're gonna have to buy the switches and the keycaps, sometimes even the cable for yourself. And third are fully custom boards. This is where you buy your own PCB, you buy your own case, you buy your own switches, you buy your own sound dampening, you buy all that, those things separately and you assemble the entire keyboard yourself. Now, most people are gonna buy a fully assembled keyboard. Bare bones are becoming a lot more popular nowadays. A lot of the uh, big companies are starting to offer hot swappable switches, which we'll go over in a second, but those also allow them to now sell bare bones style keyboards where it is the keyboard without any switches or keycaps and it gives you a lot more flexibility on what kind of switches you wanna use in that board. And finally, custom is a typically more expensive and much more intimidating area of the keyboard enthusiast space, but it allows you to have the absolute most flexibility, the most creativity, you can make your keyboard as unique as possible, and it really allows you to choose exactly what you want. Now we mentioned hot swap, and this is a feature that I highly consider you try to prioritize when getting a keyboard, especially now. In the last few years, hot swap has become a lot more popular and a lot more common, and it's not just made for the enthusiast style uh, keyboards anymore. A lot of the bigger brands are introducing hot swappable keyboards, and this is a fantastic feature. There are two main reasons that hot swappable is preferred over a standard soldered board. The first one is pretty obvious, and that's gonna be flexibility. With a hot swappable keyboard, you can put any switch that you want that fits in that hot swappable socket. This also means that you can change up your keyboard as much as you want. You can try out different switches. You can put, you know, different switches in the main area of your board, and then maybe your alt row and your arrow keys get a different switch. The second lesser thought aspect of hot swappable switches is that maintenance is a lot easier. If a switch dies on a soldered board, you have to fully disassemble it. You have to desolder that switch replace it and then solder the new switch back in. And most people aren't great with a soldering iron, don't even own a soldering iron, or aren't comfortable with soldering iron. With a hot swappable board, if a switch dies, all you gotta do is pull it out and replace it and you're done. It's super simple, super straightforward and allows your keyboards to last a lot longer um, just because you know it's super easy to just fix little parts. So we're talking about switches and there are three of the big general categories of switches. There's mechanical, there's optical, and then there's membrane. Mechanical switches are gonna be the ones that you're gonna see most often. 
Those are the ones that are gonna have the most amount of options out there for you. And personally, mechanical switches feel the best to me. Now, optical switches have become a lot more popular in recent times. They're typically faster and supposed to last longer, but most mechanical switches are gonna do a very good job for you anyways. And then membrane keyboards, you just wanna avoid as much as possible. These are the kind of keyboards that you use at school or you've used at work. They are the rubber dome keyboards. They get filled with gunk. They are impossible to do maintenance on. They're very difficult to do custom stuff on and you know make it your own. Try to avoid a membrane keyboard if you can. Now below those th big three categories, there's three subcategories of switches. There are clicky switches, there are linear switches, and then there are tactile switches. Clicky switches are the ones that most people will think about when they hear about a mechanical keyboard. These are usually something like a Cherry MX Blues. They're very loud, they're very good for typing, and that is their main use case is typing. Now, linear switches are typically fo focused on gaming. They're a lot quieter. They don't have much sound at all other than when they bottom out on the bottom of the keyboard. There's no bump in the usage of the key switch at all. A very common one that people will think of are MX Cherry Reds. And finally, the tactile switches are basically a good middle ground between the clicky and the linear. These usually have a bump, they're usually not nearly as loud, but they're a good balance between a gaming and typing experience. The most common tactile switch is gonna be a brown. Usually the Cherry MX Browns are ones that most people will know about. One big suggestion that I have for you when choosing switches is to try to actually physically try them out. Go to your local computer shop, see if they have a bunch of keyboards out there that you can try with different switches. If you really want to, you can actually buy a switch tester that's usually a board that has you know, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50 switches on it, and you can try them all out and see what they feel like. But switches are mainly a personal feel, both auditory and physical feel. So try them all out and see which one you like. Now next up is gonna be the build quality of the keyboard. Typically, a good keyboard is gonna be a little bit heavier. It's gonna be made of thicker materials, typically a metal or a very well-built plastic. It's gonna have good sound dampening, either with those materials or with added sound dampening within the case. And the overall quality of the components of it are gonna be better, like good PB, double shot PBT keycaps, you know, a good, nice braided cable. Now on top of all that build quality stuff is gonna be sound dampening and stabilizers. I'm not gonna cover all those in this video because the average person is not really gonna to need to consider either of those when buying a new keyboard for the most part. That kind of stuff really applies to custom boards and modifying existing boards, which if you would like, I can talk about in a future video. Now there are some other features that you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind when going and buying a keyboard. Some of these are gonna be more important for people, some of them are not gonna be as important. So the first one, and the one that I would put the most emphasis on is having a detachable USB cable. Having a detachable USB cable has the same pros as having hot-swappable switches. It allows you to have a lot more flexibility. You can get very fancy with the cables that you use for your keyboard and really personalize the look of your keyboard with cables. And also that second maintenance aspect where if the cable ends up getting destroyed or dies over time, you can just easily replace it and not have to replace the whole keyboard. Now another feature that is not as common as it is in mice is wireless keyboards. Now a lot of the higher end keyboards are not typically wireless and that's because battery takes up space within the case and space in a lot of cases is very limited and the space that is usually available in there, uh, people and companies would prefer putting sound dampening in there to help with the sound of the keyboard. Keychron, however, as an example, makes tons of great wireless keyboards. They have a lot of options out there. And you know, Epo Maker and all those, they make a lot of good, small, good wireless keyboards. And if you feel like you need a wireless keyboard for whatever reason, they're a good choice. 
For example, the keyboard that I use on my stream computer is wireless. And the reason for that is I like to switch between this monitor and the monitor that I have over here. So having it wireless allows me to move it around really easily. It allows me to use this as a hotkey thing. I can put it over on the side and just use it for a bunch of hotkeys. Having it wireless is just an added benefit. I typically don't have it in wireless mode unless I am gonna move it and pull it out somewhere. I'll typically just have it in cable mode, but I do have that added flexibility. I do have a bunch of keyboards that I am planning on reviewing. So make sure to hit that bell icon if you wanna be notified when those videos come out. And on that topic, if there are any particular keyboards or switches or keycaps, or anything related to that that you would like me to check out and that you would like me to talk about, please let me know in the comment section down below. I do really enjoy keyboards. I love trying out new switches. I love, you know, tinkering with them. I love playing with QMK. Keyboards are a really fun hobby for me within the, you know, computer space, and I'm really enjoying this. So if you do have any suggestions, make sure to let me know. Now, the final important thing to think about is the software that gets used with that keyboard. A lot of custom and bare bones boards use QMK and some of them will even use VIA on top of QMK. QMK is very code based and VIA just gives you a good graphical interface to use with that, but not all QMK boards can be used within VIA. And then you have your proprietary software, you know, like Razer and Glorious and all those guys, they all have their own proprietary software. So keep that in mind, you know, some of them are more annoying than others. Some of them are more featureful than others. Just take a look, see what's available out there. And it's not going to be a major decision point for you, but it is something to consider. And finally, let me know what keyboard you guys are using down in the comment section below, whether it's the board, the switches, the keycaps, cable, anything like that leave it down below. I'm really excited to see what you guys are using on a daily basis. So if you'd like to know what keyboard I'm using, I'm actually using the Drop Control. It's a 10 keyless hot swappable keyboard. My main switches are the Kali Box Whites, and then the Alt Row and the Home Cluster and the arrow keys are using the Drop Halo switches. I also did a video a little while ago about getting the Cable Mods custom keyboard cable and that thing looks awesome it really matches with the look of the rest of my build especially my computer and overall i do enjoy this keyboard there are some things that i'm not so happy about and i'm more than excited to try new keyboards so recommendations are very difficult when it comes to keyboards there are so many options out there and it's such a personal choice when choosing a keyboard but i do have some suggestions for you now first off ducky is an incredible brand I have loved Ducky boards for a really long time. This is the Ducky 1-2 Mini. It's a 60% board, very good build. I don't use this one very much anymore. It has red switches and I'm not a huge fan of red switches. I like typing a lot and having a linear switch is just not something I really enjoy, but this board is very, very well built. Um, it feels incredible. It sounds great. Very good suggestion. Now. I used this Ducky Shine 3 for a very long time, full-size keyboard, built like an absolute tank, MX Cherry Blues, one of my favorite keyboards ever, um, but it was just getting a little bit too large for my desk and I liked having a little bit more space. If you want another full-size Ducky, the Ducky 1-3 is a great choice. The Shine boards are very expensive, but they're also very good. Ducky is a good trusted brand and I definitely suggest you check them out. If you want another board that gives you some options, the SteelSeries Apex Pro comes in full size and 10 keyless. It is a very good option as well. It has a lot of features on it, good detachable cables, multimedia keys, you know, very well built and it's easy to get your hands on. Also, the HyperX Alloy line is a great line of keyboards that has a ton of options, bunch of different sizes, bunch of different switches. Those ones I definitely suggest you check out as well. I will leave links to all these suggestions down in the description below. I'm also going to leave a link to my recommendation section on my new website that I have added a keyboard section to. It's gonna have a full list of keyboards with links and a little blurb about them. So if you wanna check that out, please go ahead. It'll be in the description below. And that's it. I really hope that this video helps you and guides you towards your perfect keyboard for you. It's definitely not an easy choice, but there are so many good keyboards out there now. They're becoming more and more accessible. A lot of great options are showing up on more budget boards and keyboards are just such a great aspect of your build to be able to customize and kind of give a little bit of personality. So I highly suggest you just take your time and choose one that you like. But if you did find it helpful, I'd really appreciate if you like subscribed. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below and I'll get to them as quick as I can. 
I'd like to thank my Patreon sponsors, Thought Slime, Step Back, and Rojo Son of Dojo, and I'd like to thank you for watching the end of the video. Come back next week as we're going to talk about headphones. As always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next Friday.